Magandang hapon po sa ating lahat To all those uh, who are watching also in our live stream Good afternoon, welcome to our afternoon worship service As we start our service, let's uh, stand up and let's sing the song Each Step I Take Okay, on the first verse, ready, sing Each step I take, my Savior goes before me and with his loving hand he leads the way and with each breath i whisper i adore thee oh what joy to walk with him each day each step i'll take i know that he will guide me to higher ground he ever leads me on until someday the last step will be taken each step i'll take the lead me closer on a second verse at times i feel my faith begin to waver when up ahead i see chasm wide it's then I turn and look up to my Savior. I am strong when He is by my side. Each step I'll take, I know that He will guide me to higher ground. He never leaves me on until someday last step will each step I'll take just leads me close on the third verse. I trust in God, no matter come what may, for life eternal in His hand. He holds the key that opens up the way that we need. The promised land on a chorus. Each step I'll take, I know that He will guide me to higher ground. He ever leads me on until someday the last step will be taken. Each step I'll take that leads me closer home. Okay, for the last time, we'll sing the chorus all together in harmony, a cappella. Okay, on the chorus, each step I'll take. Ready, sing. Each step I'll take. to higher ground. He ever leads me on. Until someday, the last will be taken each step i'll take that leads me closer home amen for that wonderful song okay for this time we call on brother jay for our opening prayer okay so let us pray father in heaven lord thank you once again for this wonderful time that you have given to us as we can worship you and praise you uh, through music and also lord by uh, studying your word lord please continue to bless us especially those who are here right now on site and also those worshiping with us uh, via facebook lord continue to open our hearts and mind and also forgive us from all our shorts coming and also lord for our speaker for uh, this afternoon continue to use him and also give him wisdom and knowledge panginoon para po sa pagbabahagi ng mga salita maraming salamat po ito po kami dalangin sa pangalan ni jesus amen okay, you may be seated as we listen and watch the artwork
And there's nothing anything there's nothing impossible with God okay as we continue our service let's stand up and let's sing our second song he brought me out okay okay on the first verse ready sing my heart was distressed did Jehovah straight on and lo when the pit where my sins spread me down I cried to the Lord from the deep my clay, who tenderly brought me out to golden day. He brought me out of the miry clay. He set my feet on the rock to stay. He puts a song in my soul today. A song of praise, hallelujah. On the second verse. He placed me upon the strong rock by his side. My steps were established and here I'll abide. No danger of falling while here I remain. But stand by his grace until the crown I gain. He brought me out of the miry clay. He set my feet on the rock to stay. He brought in my soul today a song of praise. Hallelujah. Thank you very much. You may be seated as we listen to our announcements. Well, good afternoon and uh, welcome again to Baptist Bible Church. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. There's always a different feeling when you're in the house of God. Amen? Amen. You can feel the presence of the Lord. Okay? And uh, just to remind you of some things going on around the church, next Sunday will be a big day at Baptist Bible Church. We will be celebrating our 73rd anniversary. Amen? Amen. We're so glad for God's faithfulness over the years that He have helped uh, and, and lead, led a Baptist Bible Church. And through to this church, God has 
uh, trained people, have churches have been built. Can you imagine how many daughter churches and souls got, got saved because of Baptist Bible Church? We praise the Lord for the people that God has used, uh, for Pastor Frank Hoogie who started the church, and our dear pastor who have been faithful over the years of uh, ministering here at Baptist Bible Church. So next Sunday, we'll have a special, special guest and in the morning and in the afternoon. We'll, be, we'll have lunch together. You can bring it home and stay. And in the afternoon, be back as we will be able to view a documentary about Baptist Bible Church. That will be in the afternoon. And then be back for our, uh, our evening service. And then we'll have uh, giveaways and also souvenir items to remind us of our 73rd anniversary. Okay? So let's do pray. And before, uh, let's pray as a church. Before we take lunch tomorrow until one week, okay? So don't forget to pray for our anniversary that God will be able to use our anniversary and the, as, as we preach God's word, the people will get saved. We'll bring people here in church. Let's bring, invite people to come to church. And for those of you who are online, you can share this video or our service to our, your, your friends and relatives so they can, they can too hear the gospel, okay? Let's lose this opportunity to be able to win souls for Christ. And then, uh, following Sunday, January 30, we'll be observing the Lord's Supper. It's one of the ordinances of the church. First is baptism, and second is the Lord's Supper. So every saved individual should be pres present here in church as we partake of the Lord's Supper. And then, uh, don't forget our Wednesday prayer meeting. Every uh, on-site will be at 4, and then online will be at... Uh, you can also watch it online by 6 p.m. And also our... Uh, Bible studies for men every Thursdays that will be announced in your uh, uh, Facebook account. And also a uh, ladies' uh, Bible study every Fridays at 8. And also every Saturday for the adult Bible study, you will have uh, Bible studies in the morning, 9, in the afternoon at 3, and in the evening at 8 p.m. Okay, so please do uh, join this Bible study so that we can be able to grow in our faith and study more, learn more about the God that we serve. Okay, so don't forget also our regular tithes and offering. This is week seven of our faith promise giving, sharing Christ the Savior. And uh, we praise the Lord that um, uh, we were able to be faithful in our giving. So we, we, we support 69 missionaries and 16 local missionaries. Please do pray for our uh, missionary men. Okay, Sister Hannah is already in uh, Vietnam. And then let's uh, continue to pray for uh, uh, Brother Min. Mukhang si Brother Min ang may iwan, si Sana ang magsisimula. <laughs> so let's uh, pray that the, the two of Brother Min will be, will be able to go to Vietnam and to join, to join her wife and that, that they, can, they can start their missions there in, their, in uh, Brother Min's country. And also uh, our, our missionary for this week is missionary uh, Stephen Taala. Let's continue to pray for him and his family as they minister uh, he, there in, uh, in the States, in New York. Um, Jacksonville, Jacksonville, yata ang stock ng address eh. Okay, so uh, let's be faithful in giving our tithes and our faith promise. 70,000 per week to be able to support our missionaries. Okay, and you can give your uh, faith promise on-site by being present here in church. Bring the tithes in the storehouse, so be here and give your tithes and offerings. And you can also, if you, if cannot, if you cannot come, then you can also... Do bank uh, transactions through our online banking. Uh, the the uh, account will be posted on your screens, and you can be able to give your tithes and offerings. Okay, so I think those are announcements. Uh, do we have anyone visiting with us for the very first time this morning? We have one, so we praise the Lord for that. Let's all stand up and let's welcome one another. Let's stand up and let's sing the welcome song. So let's just wave only to each other. For those who are online, just uh, leave a message on our uh, virtual message box. Okay? As we sing the welcome song, ready, sing. There's a welcome here, a welcome here. There's a Christian welcome here. Hallelujah. There's a welcome here, a welcome here. There's a Christian welcome. Let's sing First John 4, 7 and 8. Beloved, let us love one another, love one another. For love is of God and everyone. 
worship the very sport of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth that God, for God is love, God is love. Beloved, let us love one another first. John 4, 7 and 8. Amen. So as we have our offering, May I call on all the ushers to come forward. Right, as we have our opening prayer, let's pray. Lord, thank you, Lord, for uh, this time, Lord, that uh, we have again uh, the opportunity to praise and worship you, Lord. And also, Lord, as we have our offering this afternoon, Lord, that you will bless uh, the gift and the giver, O oh God. Be able to use this, Lord, for your ministries, Lord, and for your glory and your honor, Lord. Thank you, O God, for the blessing that we have received from you. Continue to bless us with thy blessing and continue to provide us, Lord, what we need. Thank you, O God. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, you may be seated as we listen and watch to the special number. Exactly what you want 
to be just exactly what you want I want to be just exactly what you want me to be Good evening and welcome to our evening service. I hope that uh, you're all doing well and for some of us, many are sick and let's continue to pray for each other. So let's pray that none of our members would get, would get the sickness so bad that uh, it would be very, very serious. Uh, how many of you have faced battles this week? Now, of course you do. Uh, many of us have faced battle this week just, just going to the pla your place of work. The daily hassle of going to the place of work and the struggle that you exert every month to make both end meets. But this is not the battle that I will be addressing tonight. From the moment that we have trusted Jesus Christ as our Savior, we have been drafted as a soldier of Christ. He, we have changed our allegiance from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of His dear Son. Naturally, there will be a declaration of war against us from our enemies. And those enemies could be categorized as this, the world, the flesh, and the devil. And remember this, that you are no longer in friendly terms with them. And if you have noticed that the moment that you trusted Jesus Christ, instead of your battles going away, in many of us, these battles have magnified. Now, how, we, how do we navigate through the battles that we are going to face as a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. David, in the psalm that we are going to read today, give us truth that we must remember as we face life's battles. He has faced many battles himself, and that's why he is very much capable of admonishing us and telling us that because the Lord delivers his own, let us trust in him in the day of trouble. Shall we all turn our Bibles to the book of Psalms 90, uh, 20? Book of Psalms 20. And let's read in verse 1 as we all stand together. And uh, follow me with your eyes as you read, as we read this all together. The Lord hear thee in the day of trouble. The name of the Lord God of Jacob defend thee. Send the help from the sanctuary and strengthen thee out of Zion. Remember all thy offerings and accept thy burnt offering, Shelah. Grant thee according to thy own heart and fulfill all thy counsel. We will rejoice in thy salvation and in the name of, the, of our God. We will set up our banners. The Lord fulfill all thy petition. Verse 6. Now know that I, that I, that the Lord, save it his anointed. He will hear him from his holy heaven with saving strength in his right hand. Some trust in chariots, some trust in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord. They are brought down and are fallen. We are rising and stand upright. Save, Lord, let the king hear us when we call. 
Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for the reading of your word. These are your inspired word, and help us, Lord, that we would be able to uh, understand what you want us to say today. And Lord, help us, O oh God, that uh, we would apply it in our lives as we face our battles. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. You may please take your seat. Psalms 20 and 21 are what you would call battle psalms. And uh, the context of verse 21 is that this is a battle psalm, battle psalm that is sung uh, before they would face the enemies. And probably it was, it was written by David in the, in the times that he faced battles, whether it be the time that he was facing with the with the enemies of the Syrian and the Ammonites or the Edomites, we are not really sure. But this is a battle psalm and also Psalm chapter 21. So here is David now facing his enemies. And as we read this, we will find that there are many persons uh, in this psalm that probably a part of the choir that would be singing. Probably it would be the Levites singing or the priests at that they would uh, they would pronounce this psalm. The first part of this, probably in, verse, in verses 1 to 5, this would be the people asking petition for their king. It could probably be the soldiers or it could be the priests uh, making this prayer for David. And verse 6 would be the part that David would respond and the rest from verse 7, again, the communal prayer. So, when you read this psalm, you have to understand that this is a petition, this is a request, this is an entreaty. So, you can add the statement, may the Lord hear thee in the day of trouble. So, that is the, that is the way that this is translated in, that this, that this was translated from the original language. So, I'm going to read it in a way that um, this would reflect the the original meaning and the original intent of the author of the psalm. May the Lord hear thee in the day of trouble, the name of God of Jacob defend thee. Or oh, may the name of God of Jacob defend thee. May he send help from the sanctuary and may he strengthen thee out of Zion. May he remember all thy offerings and may he accept thy burnt offerings. May he grant thee according to thy own heart and fulfill thy counsel. So this is now the people praying for David as they would face an enemy much, much larger than their own. So what, is, what are the contents of the psalmist and treaties of those who prayed for David? And this, may, that the, may the Lord hear thee in the day of trouble. As they are going to face battles, they realize that they could not face the enemy on their own. And every time we pray, it is a confession that we in ourselves are insufficient and all sufficiency belongs to God. Yan po ang tandaan po natin na pag tayo nananalangin, isa, yung pa, isa po yun na pag-amin na wala tayong lakas na sa ating sarili, wala tayong kakayanang sarili, Sa ating hinihingi sa Panginoon na tanging sa Kanya lamang, nanggagaling ang lahat ng tulong. And we are also um, addressing to ourselves that uh, not only that we are confessing God's all-sufficiency, but we are also praying to God, basing on the understanding that we are now free to approach God at His throne. Every time that we pray, you have to remember that it is always connected to what Jesus Christ has done on the cross. The Bible says that the moment um, that, that we have received Jesus Christ our, as our Savior, we have been justified. We before are at enmity with God, but because we are justified, we have now an access to the Father. We can approach the, the throne of grace unafraid. Because we have been received as sons. So, wag po natin ihiwalay. Kung magtuturo po tayo ng, ng Bible study tungkol sa prayer, make the people understand 
that it is by the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ that's why we are able to approach Him. Kaya po tayo nakakalapit sa Kanya dahil sa uh, ginawa ni Jesus Christo. Now, the Old Testament saints such as David are looking forward to the sacrifice that God is going to make. But we in the in, in this age, on the other side of the cross, are looking backward um, at what Jesus Christ has done. So, any moment that we are in trouble, it may not be uh, battling against the enemy, such as David faced. Let us remember that we have now the access to the Father to come to His throne of grace for the petition that uh, we are asking. What, what else? For God's protection. May the name of the, of the God of Jacob defend thee. Now this phrase, the God of Jacob, is very significant. Now, the name Jacob is always associated with him being a deceiver. Right? Mangluloko. Linoko niya ang kanyang uh, tatay. Niloko niya yung kanyang kapatid. Pero naisahan naman siya ni Laban. So, trickery has always been his way. Now, for, for Jehovah God to be called a ja God of Jacob is a marvelous thing, taking into consideration that uh, J uh, Jacob himself, a schemer, a deceiver, would even have a God such as the God of Jacob. Parang, ano yan, parang kung ako si Jacob, sasabihin ko sa sarili ko, sa sarili ko, mahiya ka naman. Mandaraya ka. At ang Diyos na iyong sinasamba ay napakabanal. But yet here, in this psalmist, this is showing God's grace to a people like us who, un who are undeserving of God's protection, yet God, because of His covenant nature, protected us, protected them, protected the Israel and answered their, their help, their cry for help. Now, and next is, may he send the help from the sanctuary. Now, of course, the sanctuary, either it's a tabernacle or the temple, is the place where the God's people worship together. And as this is being prayed by the people, by the soldiers, by the priests, as they offer prayer for David, they are praying that, Lord, may you help, may you send help from the sanctuary. From the sanctuary with, uh, in their tabernacle or in their temple, and the, of course, which is picturing the sanctuary which is in the throne of heaven above. They are confident that God is the one who is going to send help whenever they will call on Him. And on, also, may the Lord strengthen thee out of Zion. May He send help, may you strengthen. Uh, be, he is strengthened you. And David experienced being strengthened by God in the many battles that he faced. If you would just read uh, 1 Samuel and 2 Samuel and in the book of 1 Kings, uh, it will tell you how <clears throat> many times that God has been, that how God has helped David in all his battles. And he realized that it is because of God's help that he was helped by God, he was strengthened by God. And also, next is that another item in his request for God to accept his offering. Now it is a very it is a very serious thing because you know what in the Old Testament, if you would offer sacrifices. If your heart is not right, God will not accept your offering. You remember Cain who offered a sacrifice unto God? And God rejected him and he was so angry that he killed his brother. For, a, for someone to offer sacrifices to God and to be rejected, it is a serious matter. But for God to accept the offering that the king made, it is a great thing na tanggapin ng Panginoon yung offering na kanyang tinatang, na tinatanggap. Now today we will be offering sacrifices of the fruit of our lips, of our singing, of our praying, and every service that we do for God 
may he find it acceptable. May he find our, our, our service to him acceptable. Because one of these days, everything that we do before God will be judged before him. And God is not going to judge our offering of service based on the scope or the greatness of the many people that we are able to reach. It will be tested by God. It will pass through the fire. And that fire is going to either uh, be classified, will classify those offerings as wood, hay, or stubble, or gold, silver, or precious stone. And may our offering of service be acceptable to them, to them. Now, what would happen if God will reject the offering that they are going to make? Just for example, just before, before they would face a battle. It is a bad thing for them. It is making a prophecy of defeat. You remember the time when in the last battle of King Saul, as he was going to face the Philistines, and the Bible says that the Lord did not talk to him, either in dreams, either in Urim or Thunim. Pinapatay, mangdami niyang ginawa kasing mga bagay sa kanyang buhay na labag sa kautosan ng Panginoon. He had done so many things in his life that is against um, the will of God. He has killed so many, uh, the billions of priests. He has killed so many people. He is after soul. He has lived a life of complete disobedience to God. And I presume that as he is facing this enemy and offer sacrifices, he knew that the Lord did not accept this offering because God is not talking to him. God is not uh, revealing his will to him. And that is why he was forced to seek a witch there at Endor. And that witch at Endor, ironically, uh, pro, uh, prophesied his defeat and his death. But here, the prayer, Lord, may you accept our offering. And you know what today? We also offer sacrifices. But how is our sacrifices uh, accepted by God? It is only accepted by God because of what the Lord Jesus Christ has done on the cross. He is the offering. He is the perfect offering that Jesus Christ, that God accept at wala na pong iba na offering na katanggap-tanggap sa Panginoon. He is the only offering that God accepts and because we are in Him, God accepts us because of His Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we are inseparably united to. At ang anak na ito, ang anak na ito, ang anak ng Diyos, He is also praying on our behalf. So also, the next item is this, is this. May He grant thee according to thy own heart and fulfill thy counsel. Ito po ay yung uh, content ng prayer niya. The King, Lord, please uh, grant the desire of our King. And His desire at that time was victory against the enemies. So what is this telling us? That we need prayer. We need prayer for each other and it is a it is uh, telling us that we need to pray for everything. We may not be like David that who is going to face the battles, that we are going to face the same battles as we do, but we face battles every day as we live out our Christian life. But here, let's take a look at the confidence of the psalmist as he is telling this. Let's read verse 6. <clears throat> let's read verse 5. We will rejoice in thy salvation, and in the name of our God, we will set up our banners and fulfill thy petition. Now the battle is yet to be done. The victory is not yet accomplished. But here is now the resolve of these people. Lord, we are going to set up our banners as if we have already won the victory banners. They are going to set this up and that is the way that they, they will express their confidence in God. It is the, as if that the battles have already been determined. The outcome of the battle has already been determined. Na sinagot na ng Panginoon ang kanilang sagot na magkakaroon ng victory. 
So in doing so, they are as if telling the enemies defiantly, we will win, we will be victorious. And they will experience victory upon victory because they have trusted in the Lord. And you will write, write you will read those things from the, from the Psalms that David did. It is not because David is a mighty warrior, though he is. But it is because he trusted in the name of our God. We will sing the joy of victory as if the outcome of the battle has already been um, known. Verse 6. Now this is now David speaking. David now responding to the prayer for him. Now I know that the Lord will save his anointed. He will heal him from his holy heaven with saving strength in his right hand. Now David here is telling, is telling, is telling us that he knows that the Lord will save his anointed. Now what does the name anointed mean? Now, in those times, the word anointed means one who, who, is, um, who is given, who is one who, in whom the oil is poured on. Parang, ano, tawag natin sa Tagalog dito ay yung hinirang. Yan, hinirang. Hinirang yung bang, binuhusin siya ng oil sa ulo, to, special oil to signify that God has appointed him to a special task. The name Messiah, Messiah, uh, means one who is anointed. And he was anointed for the purpose to be the one to lead Israel. Uh, in this battle and over his people. But it is also pointing forward to the one who is anointed by God, who will battle us, who will be the victorious one for, uh, against our battle with the world, the flesh, and the devil. And in this, we must wait and we must expect deliverance from God in the person of His Son, Jesus Christ. He will save His anointed one, the King, and He will hear Him from holy heaven, with the saving strength of his right hand. You are not David. I am not David. Pero ito po ang tandaan natin. We have the God of David uh, in whom we believe in also. Now, the expectation of deliverance, 7 to 8, 7 to 9. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of our Lord. They are brought down and fallen, but we are risen and, and stand it up. Save, O Lord, let the king hear us when we call. So, another item that we are, can see in this psalm is not only David's in, uh, the psalmist's entreaty for help and the expression of their confidence, but also the expectation of deliverance. Now I know that, uh, verse 7, some trust in chariot, some in horses, but we will remember in the name of the Lord. Now, let's take a look about the psalmist expectations manifested. Paano dito nakikita ang ano, yung, yung expectation ng psalmist, yung kanyang hope, kung ano ang kanyang inaasahan. First, let's take a look at the object of his trust. Ano ba talaga ang kanyang pinag, pinaniniwalaan o pinaniniligan o kaya hin, uh, kanyang kinikilingan ng kanyang uh, pagtitiwala? Now, sabi niya, ang ibang tao ganito, ang kanilang pinagtitiwalaan. They are, tra they are trusting in the armaments of warfare. During those times, uh, the thing that they are most afraid of, if you are an Israelite, who most of the Israelites are only fighting as foot soldiers. A horse, a man on a horseback and on a chariot would be terrifying for them. Because they have a greater advantage if they would be on horseback, if their enemies would be on horseback on, on chariots. And, the, and during those times, armies would determine their strength in term, terms of horses and in chariots. And it would be easy also for the Israelites to fear the enemy. And also, it would be easy 
for the Israelites to gather chariots and horses so that they would be con confident as they face their battles. Strangely enough, in the Deuteronomy, the children of Israelites are forbidden to have horses, uh, to multiply horses, so that they would, that would be the source of their trust. Open your Bibles, please, to the book of the Deuteronomy, chapter 17, verse 16. This is now, uh, God instructed them, when they go over to the promised land, these are the things that you would not do. Uh, uh, verse 14, para babasa natin ang context. When thou art come into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, and thou shalt possess, and thou shalt dwell therein, and shalt say that I will sit a king over them like the, uh, all the nations that are about me, then thou shalt in any wise set up him o the king over thee, whom the Lord thy God shall choose, the one from among the brethren, thou shalt set a king over thee that thou Thou mayest set not a stranger over thee, which is not thy brother. But he shall not multiply horses unto himself, nor cause the people to return to Egypt, unto the end that he should multiply horses. For as much as the Lord had said unto you, ye shall not henceforth return no more that way. Egypt is the place where horse racing is done. It is famous for horse racing. God forbid them to race, to multiply horses among themselves, lest they go back to Egypt or have relationship with Egypt. God has already delivered them from that. And it all also caused them to lose their trust in God. You remember the time that God has remembered them, that he re delivered the children of Israel in a miraculous way. That with, uh, you, if you really remember, as we have studied the book of Judges, God delivered them with only 300 men against the Midianites. It is a miracle. And every time in the battles that God would show his mighty hand, he would deliver them regardless how much enemies they face. So, this is to point them to point to them that they would not put their object of trust in the armaments that they have. Horses, chariots. And today it would be equivalent to putting our trust in our tanks, in our stealth weapons, in, in our missiles, missiles, or other, or other instruments of warfare. We have to put our trust in God. Now, this is not to say that we should not take care of our defenses as a nation. But individually, as a believer, let us put our trust on God who is always in control of everything that happens around the world. To him, what is the object of his trust? He said, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. As David, he himself is the one who had proven this. Remember, as he was faced with Goliath, as Goliath was cursing him by his gods, hinahamak niya si David sa pamamagitan ng pangalan ng kanyang Diyos. Anong sabi ni David? You come to me with sword and spear and shield, but I come to you in the name of the Lord our God. Even though Goliath was heavily armored and has a very big spear and a very large sword. Yet the outcome of the battle showed that God, the God of Israel, is mightier than the God of the Philistines. That even with a stone in a sling, he was able to defeat the giant. It was by the name of the Lord he acknowledged that they will have victory. Now remember that the battle is not, has not yet happened. But let's take a look at what, uh, at the kind of faith that the psalmist show. Verse 8. They are brought down and fallen, but we are risen and stand upright. 
Now he is speaking as if this is already in the past tense. Parang prophetic past tense na parang nag-prophesize siya na talo na ang kalaban. Now, he was able to have this kind of confidence because he is battling in the name of God. And then, let's take a look at his final appeal. He said, Save, O Lord, let, not the, let the king hear us when we call. A final appeal for him, for God to help them as they face with their enemies. So, what is this telling us? What is this psalm um, telling us and uh, exhorting us? First, this is telling us, the least, one of the lessons that we can learn from this psalm is this, that prayer and intercession for each other is of inestimable value. Ang ating pananalangin at um, pananalangin sa isa't isa ay talagang hindi natin matawaran ang kanyang halaga. Let's pray for one another. Lalo na ngayon. And many of us, I acknowledge that many of us are not present here because they caught the disease. And some of them may have flu and other illnesses. And uh, they do not want to the risk of infecting others. And, I, and we can understand that. So let's pray, for, let's pray for each other. Let's take this opportunity to pray for one another. Ito po yung pinakamaganda natin gagawin sa isa't isa. Praying for another, and anyone can pray. Even those people who are sick can pray. Even those who are dealing with issues of life, and that should be a motivation for you to pray even more. It is of inestimable value. Whatever your situation in life, you are whether if you are in a, in the midst of the battle, whether you are happy, whether you are down or whatever uh, the situation you're facing, always pray. Next, we must place our confidence not on the tangible things, tangible and earthly things, but on God alone. Some people put their trust in chariots, some in horses, some in financial stability, some in properties, some in the money that they own in their pocket. Now, those are good. Those are not necessarily bad. I'm not telling that you have to throw away your pocketbook. You have to throw away your wallet or your purses. That's not what I'm saying. Nor give up your property. Those are stewardship that God has God put in your hands. But do not put your ultimate trust in them. It is easy for us to, when we have those things in our possession that we put our trust in them as if that would be the ultimate source of our security. Remember that this could be gone anytime. Put your confidence on God alone and thank God for the things that you have and use it for God's service. Because once we put our things on anything, may it be persons, May it be things that we possess. May it be possession that we have. If we put our trust in them, those things would become our idol and stumbling block before our eyes. And lastly, let us remember that because of Calvary, we are more than conquerors through Him who loves us. We are going to be faced with battles. And I am not guaranteeing you that you are not going to that you are going to face all of these battles in such a way that you would be successful here on earth in fact it may call you to things that may even put yourself at risk that you would even put your life at risk open our bibles please to the book of romans chapter 8 romans chapter 8 but as we, pray, as we face this battle, let us remember the truth that nothing could separate us from the love of God. Verse 31. Basahin nga natin ang verse 28. 
And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. For whom he did for you, did he also predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. Whom he called, he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. What shall we say then to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that is spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us, how shall we how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Is God, if God did not spare his own son for us, would he also withhold other things lesser than the son? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifies it. Now, what it means that who can put a charge against people who have whom God has chosen for himself? He said, no one, because God has already justified us. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died. Ye rather that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who maketh intercession for us. Who can condemn us when Jesus Christ is interceding for us? Who shall separate us from the love of God? Shall tribulation, distress, persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword, as it is written, for they sake we are killed all day long, and we are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors to him who loves us. So this is not guaranteeing us that we will be exempt from the life's trouble. Some of us may, may experience death by persecution, by peril, by sword or famine. But the Bible says, even though we go through those things, we are more than conquerors to him who loves us. For I am persuaded, verse 38, that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Napakagandang promise that even though you may experience martyrdom, persecution, death, being rejected by all, but because Jesus Christ loved you, you will never be separated from Him. You will never be separated from, from God, from the love of God. And in this, you are more than conquerors through him who loves us. The troubles that you will face here on earth is just for a short time. But your union and the joy that you will face with God is forever and forever. The moment that you become a Christian, you have to remember this, you have entered into a battleground. But thank God, there's someone who, ha who, had, who, who had triumphed over death. And the Bible says in the book of John that who is he that overcome it? It is he who believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. The moment that you trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior, you have overcome the world. You have been delivered from the powers of darkness into the kingdom of his dear Son. Now, let me ask a question. Have you trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior? Have you repented of your sins? And you have trusted in Jesus Christ alone as the one who could save you. Because he's the only sacrifice that God has given us for our sin. He's the only one who is the qualified sin bearer. Because he is God and at the same time man. He, he is the one who is the perfect payment for our sin. As a man who lives his perfect life, he is our qualified sin bearer. By, his, by the sacrifice that he has done on the cross. And because he is God, he triumphed over death. And it was demonstrated by his resurrection, by his death on the cross, and by his resurrection. Anyone who would put their trust in Jesus Christ will be saved. So if you are here today, and you have not yet trusted in the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, I urge you to come to him in repentance and faith, and receive the gift of 
eternal life that Jesus Christ offers, and this can be yours by believing in Him. And remember this, that because of Jesus Christ, we are more than conquerors in all our battles that we face. Shall we all stand up, please? Heavenly Father, we come to you tonight, and we ask the Lord that you would bless the, the invitation, Lord, that people would come to your saving knowledge if they are not yet saved. Help us, O oh Lord, that, they, that your Holy Spirit would have a free reign in each of our hearts. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. As we have this invitation, if you have not yet trusted in Jesus Christ as your Savior, you are not yet saved. I urge you to trust in Him and in Him alone. Remember, it's not our religion that will bring us to heaven. It's not our own efforts. It's not our own goodness but in the Lord Jesus Christ alone. Now, you are faced with battles, and maybe some, some of you are facing in different degrees. But we have not yet come to the point by which we are, go, we are tested, even to the point of death, and we thank God for that. Some of our brethren in, in Afghanistan, in Myanmar, are being killed just for being a Christian. Let's have them in our prayer. It's important that we pray in intercession for them. Some of us are facing through difficulties in lives. I don't know if some of you have, re have experienced rejection just because you are a Christian. But because of Jesus Christ who saved us, we are more than conquerors. Okay. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for your word. Help us, O oh God, to trust in you as we face life's battles. We, Lord, we cannot face it on our own, but we trust in your divine power af as we uh, go into battle. You are the one who will strengthen us. You are God, the one who will hear us. And Lord, we pray that our confidence may be on your, on your strength and not on ours. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.